Okay, naturally I started from the end by replacing uh, this uh, British uh, uh, plug with uh, a more suitable one uh, for the country where I live. Uh, that would be the uh, <laughs> the last thing, but uh, I just thought I was ready to plug in uh, whenever it uh, I needed to plug it in. Okay, it's uh, time to uh, remove all the power supply parts, the uh, capacitor for the 5 volts. Uh, actually, this is uh, after the rectifier, so these are about 9 volts. Transformer, and I have to extract the broken uh, fuse holder. Uh, of course, clean everything. And I've removed this uh, probably uh, key contact that uh, was uh, interrupting uh, the, the ground retard. Uh, I will uh, connect together uh, these two black wires. And well, I don't have a key to uh, try to turn this. Uh, what this switch probably but uh, uh, too bad for the hole in the case but anyway uh, maybe I can leave it uh, just to fill the hole and um, of course uh, leaving this connected uh, we'll see if you replace the broken fuse holder I found that it's uh, slightly longer uh, one but it fits perfectly uh, the longest part uh, doesn't give any problem uh, out of this donor uh, all the HP instrument that was not repairable so I'm using it only for parts so uh, this was uh, its fuse holder and will be now on the, on the pet 2001 yeah extracted the uh, transformer uh, all the wirings uh, and the smoothing electrolytic capacitor and check it, uh, the secondary is continuity there must be continuity between uh, the 5 which is a central uh, uh, of the secondary winding uh, uh, 4 and 6 that are the two um, secondary windings uh, ending for the uh, 9 volts uh, secondary then uh, continuity between 7 and 8 which is the power supply for the monitor that goes inside the monitor via this cable and then primary continuity uh, between uh, black and white and there is also a red wire which is for 220 volts primary but uh, in Europe I recommend to use always the black and the white which is 240 uh, primary uh, since we have standardized all the power supply uh, power lines to 230 volts um, but these linear regulators uh, it's always better to use a higher primary uh, 240 um, there, of course if you can choose uh, so this was uh, coming from UK so it was already on 240 but my older uh, 30 32 was wired with the red and so I wired them uh, black and, uh, and white for 240 but anyway uh, replaced uh, soldering uh, uh, and insulated with uh, a head trim tubbing where it was uh, missing insulation also those two so now I will uh, try to check uh, this electrolytic capacitor uh, and see if it's uh, still good but I believe so test the capacitor um, I put a um, resistor in series with uh, variable uh, power supply DC power supply 
uh, set to 10 volts in this case because this capacitor is rated at 15 volts so never exceed the rating of the voltage and placing first the multimeter measuring uh, the actual uh, uh, voltage on the capacitor and let's power on the supply on 10 volts and what we have said is the voltage on the capacitor is rising which is good and should reach uh, 10 volt but slowly because of the uh, resistor in series which is uh, uh, 500 ohms or but less than 1 kilo ohm is uh, always good we want to charge the capacitor slowly first so it's rising once uh, it reaches uh, 10 volts uh, I will uh, turn uh, measurement to current of course uh, 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 in series with the resistor this time uh, and see if the current uh, is uh, very low as we uh, should expect on uh, this kind of uh, electrolytics yeah, the voltage uh, on the capacitor is st uh, stable now so let's see if there is any current uh, leakage Okay, now I put the activity in uh, current uh, uh, measuring mode, put in series with still the dropping resistor and feeding uh, the capacitor, of course from the same uh, voltage uh, power supply. And with the capacitor already charged to 10 volts, the current consumption is 40, about 41 microamperes. This is on the lowest range, 200 microamperes is the range. And it's stable or slightly decrease, decreasing, so it's very good. 41 microamps for such a big capacitor and of this age, it means it's probably uh, as good as new. So next step will be powering the transformer from uh, uh, the C line, measure voltages and see if all, everything looks in spec, it can be connected to the PET motherboard. Okay, final test, before connecting uh, back the power supply to uh, the PET motherboard and monitor, let's check the actual uh, voltages on the secondaries. So of course the primary is connected to the mains of be ex very careful extra careful when working with live equipment uh, if you are not sure uh, what to do don't do it but anyway uh, I insulate anything uh, can, con can be connected to the mains and then power on what we should find is between 5 and 4 and 5 and 6 about 8 to 9 volts and between 8 and 7 uh, 16 to 17 to 18 volts uh, not much more than this anyway this is the motherboard power supply uh, center tapped and 7 and 8 are the power supply for the monitor part and this is uh, the early PET 2001 power transformer so it doesn't have uh, the secondaries for dynamic RAM voltages like the ladder PETs so 8 to 9 volts here and indeed it's ok now the same here yep finally between 7 and 8 uh, uh, about 16 to 19 volts we are on the lower side but uh, it's okay works fine 
uh, that's because uh, this is wired for 240 and mains voltage is 230 that is actually a good thing with all the linear regulators uh, because they run cooler inside of the monitor PCB which is the dirtiest thing I've seen in my life a uh, lot of dust uh, a lot of rust also yeah the better working on the monitor uh, first remove the all the case uh, from the main unit then uh, uh, started the PCB and first of all I will uh, clean all the dust then uh, check semiconductor check electrolytics and after that if not in wrong I will try to power it on when uh, trying to operate uh, this kind of monitor with the PCB removed uh, just make sure that no parts uh, metallic parts touch the the chassis that's why I put this uh, sheet of paper to prevent the metal tabs of the a head sink to touch the metal of the um, the chassis uh, also on this side uh, I didn't find any uh, obviously broken uh, uh, junction either of diodes or transistors no low ESR on uh, electrolytics so I just powered on and it just works Finally, I received the uh, uh, spare 016 and my old 012 back. So I paid for a 016 replacement, so now the pet can run uh, on its own with all the ROMs and uh, half the original RAM, which was anyway a, a configuration offered back at the time. And yes. Uh, 3071 bytes free for basic which is not a lot okay is the final test uh, the power supply connected to its motherboard uh, powering also the monitor and it works this is the pet using uh, its own uh, roms and rams only four kilobytes were left after the failed uh, 6550 that it was was exactly one configuration offer at that, the time uh, but I have installed uh, one my, of my prototype um, RAM ROM replacement ports so I can have 32 kilobytes and uh, the uh, newer basic uh, basic 2 and basic 4 if I want so that's almost uh, the end of uh, this patch 2001 restoration. The next step will be extracting uh, the monitor, CRT and electronics uh, and restore the case, uh, the pint of uh, the case. Uh, like I did on the 3032, which is almost finished, uh, I have to assemble back everything uh, uh, keyboard and motherboard inside but here's the final result after painting uh, so that would be uh, the same uh, uh, for the 2001 and yeah, assemble it back in the near future so thank you for watching